Tornado Twins here and let's start off with a moment of silence in awe of the new features inside of Unity 5. <laughs> I mean, have you seen anything this stunning before inside of Unity? We've used it since version 2 and we have not. So, let's take a look here at what's going on. These trees and this vegetation is made in uh, collaboration with a company called Speed Tree. Um, and together with the overhaul and the lighting system, uh, we have, uh, you know, completely almost new stunning engine going on it almost looks like so if i go and, and and get close to these trees you can see that the light is going through every single leaf and the leaves animate in the wind i can change the wind settings and and make gushing of wind happen i could uh, you know pretty much have a tornado go through these uh, and and the, the trees will update dynamically which pretty much dwarfs any other vegetation pack on the asset store this is a completely new world inside of unity that we get to play with um, you know, that said, also the grass, I don't know if you've used Unity before in previous versions, but if you turned wind on, the grass would kind of skate over the floor, uh, which is really not terrific, um, you know, as, as, as the grass would kind of move around. Now the grass is impacted by the wind, and even you can set specific wind zones, so it's only impacted at that spot. Um, but only the top of the grass will move, as long as you use speed tree grass. Okay, so... Now I want to talk about one of the most important new features is if you look at this tree right here and I back up, there's no weird blip where, uh, you know, the tree turns into a billboard image. You know, it's, it's just going to stay the same tree even though it's not. Uh, and I can prove this if I go to uh, my scene here and click on one of these trees. Uh, which one was it? We were looking at this one here. Um, and if I switch through my stages of level of detail, you can see that I'm going to s filter into the second level of detail right now, and now I'm in it, and you didn't see any change in the tree. None at all. Um, and this is not something that we're used to in previous versions of Unity. Uh, incredibly awesome. Of course, the further you go, uh, you know, the less polys you, you can do. And the Speed Tree Modeler, which is its own tree modeler, allows you to make those level of detail stages, which is incredibly insane. So um, I was I was kind of flabbergasted by how little attention Speed Tree was getting uh, when it comes to the Unity 5 launch. And I've had to shut up about it for about a year. So you're going to have to deal with some of my excitement inside of this uh, video uh, as we show you how you can make these trees and how you can pretty much even draw them by hand if you wanted to or uh, make them grow around your 3D meshes um, and then import them into Unity. Alright, first things first, I have downloaded a tree from speedtree.com website inside of the speedtree modeler uh, that you can download for free and I'm first going to focus on how to uh, use it inside of Unity and in the second video I'll show you how to make your own trees. So. Import and exporting is actually very, very easy. If I save this palm tree here um, and I go to my assets folder inside of my Unity project, um, then I can save all the assets right there, including, of course, this palm tree. So I'm going to make a new folder called palm and then call this palm tree and hit save. Now it saves the file as an SPM file, which uh, is a speed tree model file and I can safely close things here now because that's the native file format. Now if I switch to Unity it will start importing these assets uh, as well as turning you know all the um, materials to the right places and it's going to ask me hey do you want to treat these as normal maps and yes I do want to fix that. So uh, Unity catches on with that pretty quickly. So now if I go to my palm directly, you can see all the things that it has saved. It has put uh, different things in atlases to save on uh, draw calls and those kind of things. But the most important piece here is the palm tree here in uh, the middle, which is the SPM file. If I go to Finder, you can see it is the speed tree modeling file uh, that Unity can natively read as a mesh with all the preset level of detail in it already. Now one of the main things here is the hue color, which is as you paint trees on the terrain, is the variation in color that you can select. So I'm going to keep mine fairly green here so that the light can play with it, um, rather than sort of the orange um, color. So that's fine. Um, I'm going to switch over and it wants me to apply my import settings and that's cool. So I'm going to show you two ways to use speed tree trees inside of Unity. And the first one is by placing them by hand like I'm doing right now. Now the trick here is 
Um, and this is a mistake that I've been making, uh, you know, early on, uh, which I'd urge you not to make, is I like speed tree modeler a lot, so I make a lot of trees in the same variation. You know, a palm tree with, that bends a little bit this way, a palm tree that bends a little bit that way. But when you do that, each time you import the tree inside of Unity, it creates new materials and a new mesh, which for those of you that know optimization well, is not a good idea because every single material in the scene multiplied by the lights that impact it is one draw call. And you want to keep your draw calls in a desktop game lower than 2000. And 2000 is not a crazy amount to work with. But when you go mobile, it's even even less. Uh, so you want to keep that as low as possible. And when I develop our uh, our levels, I like to keep draw calls at around 800. So that when we do you know very interesting stuff like highly detailed characters or cutscenes and stuff like that, we can go to the 2000 if we need to. So as you can see now, I've cloned the same tree a couple of times, changed its rotation and its height, and once the game runs, it's going to look like it's a different tree um, because of the offset and height, but also because the wind settings apply to it, uh, make it look like a unique tree in its current place. So that's completely okay to do. All right, awesome. So I like this a lot. That's cool. Now let me show you the second method of working with trees inside of Unity. So I'm going to select my terrain here and in my density settings I have uh, cranked up the detail resolution to about 2048 as well as the detail resolution per patch. Now what is detail you ask? Uh, simple, simply meant it is the amount of detail and grass and trees that you can paint on a small patch so you can get very dense. Since this level is is, is fairly small and there's only uh, vegetation in the middle I can make it very very dense uh, for my purposes uh, but it depends on what you want for your game so now let's go to the uh, tree placing tool and I'm gonna say edit my trees and add a tree and it brings up a pop-up box where I can drop the tree in now in this case I'm gonna look for my grass that I've made earlier um, so it's in the Ephraim folder and here's the grass. I'm going to drop that in and hit add and now I've added grass to my brush that I can draw with. So I'm going to make the brush size very very small uh, because Unity listens very closely to this and the tree density very very high and the height is pretty low because it's grass. So I'm going to paint a little bit around these rocks here and I'm going to shift click and paint some of that away because I don't want the grass to go through the rocks at least not too much a little bit is fine and I'm gonna place some trees here as well or should I say grass because in you know in essence it's the same thing let's make my brush size just a little bit bigger okay that was too much as I like I said unity listens very very closely to this it's a bit finicky this did not get you know um, uh, changed in unity 5 okay cool so now for variation's sake, let's add a fern as well to my uh, trees, which I have also prepared earlier. And generally, that's as much, much as you need. I generally like to go with grass, um, sort of a bush, and then trees. And, and that's that, that easy. Most of the time, you don't even know that you're missing anything else other than that. Um, so let's not do the very high density here because we only want a few ferns here and there. Boom, that's perfect height that I was looking for. Paint that inside of the grass, get some variation in the color. And boom, that's exactly what I wanted to achieve. So awesome, follow me over to the next video and in the next video we'll look into the Speed Tree Modeler and start making our own trees which is pretty much the cool stuff. So follow me over.